Okay, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I uh, will introduce the panellists and also provide a bit of an introduction to Madonna King while they are coming up. Uh, can I ask uh, Michael Arnold, Paul Bidwell, Paul Burton, Geoffrey Dick, uh, the Honourable Andrew Fraser, Stuart Gilchrist, Matt Gross, Brent Haley, Bob Jansen, Don Jones, Jeff McDermott, David McMahon, Kerry Young, Mayor Paul Pasali, Professor Michael Powell, Council Eddie Seroff, uh, Brian Stewart, Tony Tippett, Lindsay Wallace and Councillor Peter Young, if you'd like to uh, come up to the, uh, the front of the room as panellists for this morning. Uh, I'll just introduce Madonna, an award-winning journalist. Madonna King is one of the uh, best known and mo most highly regarded commentators in Queensland, certainly an author in her own right. Her weekly column in the Courier Mail on issues ranging from the Big Brother phenomenon to the future of our constitution is compulsory reading for the state's decision makers. As graduate of the University of Queensland and a fellow of the World Press Institute, in her 20-year career she had many key appointments. A former visiting fellow in journalism at the Queensland University of Technology and board member of the Walkley Advisory Board which oversees the industry's media awards, Madonna has interviewed everyone from Prime Ministers and Premiers to convicted murderers and armed robbers. Please welcome Madonna King. Thank you very much for that warm introduction. We'll just get people in their right seats so that you know who everyone is. Um, so much to get through this morning and in such a short time. The aim is to start a conversation, not necessarily find all the answers this morning. But someone last week in a national newspaper wondered whether the Gold Coast was going from glam to glum. And it is a legitimate question. If you look at unemployment, it's currently 7.2% compared to 4.9% nationally. Why are businesses cutting staff? Rents forcing shops to close. Skilled workers heading up the highway this morning. It was chock-a-block at a quarter to five this morning. Why is there this 90% slide in building approvals over three years? This is the Gold Coast. This is the place we love. This is the place we've been bringing our children to as we came to each Christmas too. So why is tourism in the doldrums and why is the market here so volatile and how will, does that affect investment in the next year? The population's declining, credit tightening, the overall business confidence is heading south. Is this just the, the calm before the storm, as Andrew Fraser just talked about? Is it the aftermath of the, goal, uh, the, the GFC that we're looking at? The other side of this is the death of Damien Leading and the massive community support that we saw here on the Gold Coast two weeks ago that we hadn't seen since the floods in Queensland. How do we garner that support to turn that, the, the, the view of the Gold Coast around, I guess? How do we broaden its industry base while trying to double the current tourism tallies? Let's start this morning by looking briefly, though, at what we're facing. And we heard what Andrew Fraser said, uh, how he sees Queensland going and that 2012 will be a very different from 2011. Can I start with, start with Matt Gross from National Property Research? Uh, do you support Andrew Fraser's uh, enthusiasm, uh, optimism? What do you see for the next 18 months on the Gold Coast, briefly? Uh, look, we, um, we would support uh, Andrew's assumption on, on where things will be in 18 months' time. I mean, it's certainly not going to be an easy road getting there. There's no question about that. And I, I think part of the problem that we see here, in, certainly in South East Queensland, is a degree of tiredness. You know, I think, you know, when you think about it, we've been in fighting GFC-related issues since sort of September 2007. And I think there is a, a, a fair amount of fatigue but I think if we, we look at it from a property perspective, we have seen such enormous growth over the last decade that we, we are now faced with affordability problems and, and costs have gone uh, extremely high. Um, I've just come back from Perth and one of the things we see over there is, is a very similar sort of issue here in, in South East Queensland. Um, you know, they're fighting uh, property prices that are going down. Um, they're seeing a, a lack of interest in, in residential property. Uh, they haven't got the growth in population that they'd had uh, a number of years ago. 
Um, so they're facing very similar problems. One of the things that they do do significantly better, I think, than what we have here in South East Queensland, what we need for us to grow as part of the solution for, for the Gold Coast and South East Queensland, is a much better public transport system. You know, we really do need to link everything back up. All right, let's come to that a little bit later this morning, but how do you see the next 12 months on the Gold Coast? Are we going to see property prices take up? Are we going to see jobs, significant jobs growth, for example? Look, from, a, from a, the economic side, I think we've been incredibly fortunate. Uh, last year was the worst um, sales uh, er, volumes in history, and yet prices have stayed fairly strong. The next 12 months, I think we'll see you know, a similar sort of market condition. I don't think we're going to see this, this enormous turnaround in increased volumes. We just don't have the population growth that we had to help that along. So let's just park population growth as one of those areas that obviously needs to change for that to take off. Can I go to Stuart Gilchrist, who is just next to you from Colliers? Mm. How do you see it, given, given what Andrew Fraser and uh, Matt Gross has said? Uh, being at the coalface, I'm probably a little bit more pessimistic uh, than... Uh, seen that the property market boom over the next 12 months, so certainly we don't, we don't see that at all. Being a, uh, a, a tourism and construction based economy here on the Gold Coast, um, those, those areas are doing it tough at the moment. <coughs> um, around, around the nation, when you look around the nation in terms of property values, probably here on the Gold Coast, we've, we're doing it tougher than anybody else anywhere in Australia, no doubt about that. So uh, people often ask me, you know, um, when are we going to get back to the good side? When, when is my property value going to come back? And um, our, our common answer is, you know, give it 12 months. But now that's been sort of been three, year, three years we've been saying that, so it's almost a rolling 12 months we've been saying, look, wait on, hang in there, hang in there. So uh, it really is uh, unfortunately boring, boring, but more of the same, I think, is what we can expect over the next 12 months. We've got a situation in, in various types of properties, um, some doing it, from a commercial point of view to a residential point of view, some, some are OK. Residentially wise, though, Madonna, uh, we've got two areas there. The, uh, the high value properties, over $750,000, and the Gold Coast being the holiday capital of Australia. A lot of other Australians have their second home here on the Gold Coast. So the first thing that goes when times get tough, your boat goes first and your holiday home hits second up. So that we've got a huge oversupply in that upper echelon residential market, very, very large, uh, and there's more stock coming on the market. As you see, the cranes will come down, there's more stock on the market, so there'll be a long recovery in terms of that upper echelon. In the, in the lower echelon market, the uh, first and second home buyers, um, we certainly have some issues and some problems there, just in availability of land, in time to bring that, the, the land on, in terms of construction costs, in terms of costs of getting that through the, the council process. So there are a lot of issues in there as well. All right. Can, can I go to Professor Michael Powell behind you uh, from Griffith University? And you just heard Stu Stuart Gilchrist talk about tourism and construction. If you throw in retail, that's probably the three areas that, that the Gold Coast re really revolves around the Gold Coast. Are we stuck in this second lane of a, a two-lane highway longer than other places around Queensland going into the next 12 or, or 18 months because of our focus on those three industries? Thanks, Madonna. I, I think we're uh, at the moment in the slow lane of a three-lane highway, not a two-lane highway, but we, we can get out of there, and I think we're, there are signs that are positive that would indicate we can, we can move. Um, confidence is a big, big player in that, uh, and uh, unfortunately, confidence is at a low point in the Gold Coast at the moment. We need to do a lot to boost confidence. It's good to see the festival at surface this weekend. Uh, we need leadership, uh, political leadership and so on, that is pushing the positives. So we turn around the, the attitude. The business polls show uh, low confidence. We've got to shift that, change that uh, perception. Uh, the Treasurer talked about a 12-month uh, um, uh, time frame. I'm, I'm of that view too, 12 to 18 months. I think there are big projects on stream right now. We mentioned, uh, the Treasurer mentioned the light rail. Uh, the build-up of employment there. The Gold Coast University Hospital becoming on stream 2013. There's going to be a huge employment surge uh, around a uh, fully operating tertiary hospital uh, in the Southport uh, Parklands area. The university is still growing. We're building a new $150 million medical school on the, our Gold Coast campus. So there's a lot of infrastructure, major projects going on, which will uh, bring 
uh, qualified, educated uh, people into the area. They bring money, they'll be buying houses, they'll be wanting to live here. So I, I would agree 12 to 18 months, not, no immediate turnaround, but we've got to do more, I think, to turn around the, the, the mood of the community, which is at the moment uh, quite a negative mood. All right, and we'll come to that mood in just a moment, but, and I don't want to dampen your enthusiasm, but they're, they're big things on the horizon, but so also is a carbon tax uh, and higher interest rates. Could they stop this, this in its tracks? Well, they could certainly dampen it, and, and, you know, we do need to remember that we're also at the mercy of global forces around things like exchange rates and what's happening in Europe, the, the Greek crisis, what's happening in the US. They all have impact on us, an impact on banks' confidence to lend, uh, impacts on our uh, stock market, the volatility in, in the markets. So there are those sort of factors there which can dampen uh, the, the prospects going forward. But I think there is a positive story still here. There is investment opportunities still here. When things are at a lower point, it's a good time to be investing, in fact. And, of course, we have the Commonwealth Games possibility that hopefully we'll bring home here, and that will add and, and turn things around as well. Uh, Geoffrey Dick, uh, several people have said to me earlier this morning about that the, the tightening of credit on, on development, and we'll get to that a bit later. But can you see any change or ease up in finance conditions the banks are now setting in that same time frame, the 12 to, to, to 18 months? Uh, certainly, Madonna. I, I was only just sitting here thinking um, I'm glad I wasn't here two years ago. Uh, at that stage, I, I described our um, activity as uh, being in equilibrium. We, were, um, I, we didn't want to give it to them and they didn't want it. Happily, I can say now that, that conditions have changed and, uh, of course, that was right at the height of the, the crisis that crippled financial markets. Um, but now, I, I, I'm happy to say that I think we want to give it and... Um, on not, the Gold Coast too? On the Gold Coast. If, if, I mean, worthwhile projects for certain. Um, we're, we're keen. Uh, we've established a, a separate commercial banking property team and um, we're very open to, to propositions. I just don't think people want... Uh, the confidence isn't here yet. That's probably the, the issue. Uh, M Michael Arnold's next to you. H how do you get that, that... The confidence isn't here yet. Would you agree with that, that statement? And what's the first step to turning that around? I'd 100% agree with that the confidence is not here. Um, and I think a lot of it comes down to a lack of best practice um, in, in, by, by government. And, and, and uh, I know Andrew Fraser's here this morning and um, that was some good stimulation you spoke about. However, we have a, um, we have a Sustainable Planning Act, which I believe is ineffective... Um, it replaced IPA, but to me it was tinkering at the edges. Um, local government, I think, and it's not just Gold Coast City, it's, it's in general, um, needs to um, bet, better the timelines that are put down in SPA. Um, the IDAS system is a system that works, um, but it's, it's not best practice in Australia. I believe it's slower. So that's a change you'd like the state government to make? Yeah, I think, I think it's a top-down approach. We need leadership from state government. We need, we need um, not just legislation that works. IDAS, the Integrated Development Assessment System within SPA, works. I'm um, talking from a town planning pers perspective. Um, and we know how, as an industry, how to implement that. But it's the timelines um, that are in there are just not competitive. I All think right, well, let's come to those in just, just a moment. But just throwing to, to Andrew Fraser, uh, two questions, at, at Treasurer. One is you talked about Rockhampton and Cairns being in very different situations now. Uh, where is the Gold Coast in that? Is it more Rockhampton or is it Cairns? And, and how long after we see the light rail or the university will what you're saying come to fruition? Uh, well, I think that... Uh that the Gold Coast is probably closer in its structure as an economy to Cairns in terms of focusing on uh, tourism and construction as opposed to some of the economies of central Queensland. But I would make the point also that, that uh, Cairns has been uh, much more reliant on Japanese tourism, whereas the Gold Coast has a, a much more diversified tourism base. But nevertheless, tourism's got an Aussie dollar to face with. Uh, so I think it's closer to Cairns, but I just want to make uh, one point about the last uh, discussion about the Sustainable Planning Act, and I think it's useful in this forum, and that is this. Um, the Sustainable Planning Act applies around Queensland. Uh, I have find a lot of people who talk to me about how difficult it is to get development away on the Gold Coast, but Paul Pasali and Pam Parker are here. Uh, I find it hard to come up with people who say that they complain about the development process in Logan and Ipswich. Now, the Sustainable Planning Act applies equally on the Gold Coast and Logan and Ipswich, and I think that there needs to be a point here that 
it's not just about what a piece of paper says in a parliament. It's actually about how it's implemented. Okay. And uh, that's important for any business, and we need to be clear about all that right. issue. And I do want to come to those development time frames, approval frames and costs a, a little bit later this morning. Um, so we will come back to that then, Treasurer. Uh, one final question. You look at Queensland and, as you say, it's, it's very patchy and it's going to be very patchy. It's going to grow at different, different um, time frames. Is there any validity in having, for example, going into an election, a Gold Coast policy that looks at the issues relating to the Gold Coast and both parties can present a forum like this with, this is what we would do on the Gold Coast? Uh, it's certainly something the government's done at each of the last elections and looked to the sort of commitments to make in each part of the region. I think we need to probably recognise that Queensland's great strength is its regions. It's always grown diversely. And that's one of the reasons for our generation's long prosperity, and that is at every point in time there are parts of the state doing better than others. In other... You know, in South Australia, if Adelaide's not working, then the whole joint's not working. But in Queensland, you've always got a strength of diversity in different regions growing at different paces. There's been times when uh, it's been a whole lot better on the Gold Coast than it's been in other places. And so I don't think we need to sort of... Um, leap to the end point of, of constantly saying to ourselves that everything is buggered. Uh, mm. I actually think that part of the optimism here comes from what we know and believe about the fundamentals of the place and let's but, take, but a walk, you... take a walk around outside. I don't think there's a lot of reason to actually despair that we're living in the worst part of the world it, in Australia. That is. That, that's right. And we appreciate your time here this morning. But it, would it be, am I putting words in your mouth, but would it be fair uh, as a result of this forum, if there were four or five issues that were very important to this group, that we could put it to you to take back to government and see, uh, at least from your perspective, on whether that could, you'd look at that in development of any Gold Coast platform before the election? I think that's called the normal process of government, Madonna. All right. Well, we'll make sure that's in the mail, won't we? OK, thank you, Treasurer. And we'll come back to those other issues a little bit later. Uh, let's move on to two big umbrella issues where, where a lot of the concern that has been raised in the lead-up to this lies. One of those is development, costs of business and dealing with council and government. And we'll park that one for just a moment and go to the other one, which is the reputation of the Gold Coast. Surely, if you fix the brand, people would come, demand would follow, with and that could turn a lot of this pessimism around. Is the Gold Coast seen as a good place to invest or are there reputational issues standing in the way of that investment? Uh, Paul Pasali from Ipswich, your honest view of the Gold Coast. What is your image of the Gold Coast? A short answer, Councillor Pasali. Why do they always say with me with short answer? Thanks, Madonna. Look, um, I'm glad you asked me that because... Um, Ipswich and Gold Coast and Cairns and Rockhampton, they're all... The